What follows is, strictly speaking, bonus material. If you want to keep going and thinking about maps of the circle, let's see what we can find. Nonlinear circle maps can be very subtle. This subject can get deep very quickly, but it's worth taking a quick look. Now, we've seen rotation maps of the circle, and we've seen that the irrational ones can be really, really cool with all kinds of dense orbits and things like that. But what happens when you have a non-rigid rotation, when you have something non-linear? Well, in order to compare different dynamical systems, it's time to take another side quest, this time to explain the notion of topological conjugacy. If you're ready, let's ascend and talk about what it means for two discrete time dynamical systems to be the same. Let's say that we have two systems of the form ex equals f of x and eu equals g of u. Now, x and u might be real, they might be on the circle, they might be, who knows, who cares? But what does it mean for these two systems to have the same dynamics. Mathematicians use the following definition. A topological conjugacy is a homeomorphism, phi, such that phi composed with f equals g composed with phi. And if such a phi exists, then we say that the dynamics are topologically conjugate. And the way we think about that is that, uh, look, it's really the same dynamics. Now, why is that? Why is this definition the way it is? Phi composed with f is g composed with phi. Well, let's think. Let's say that we start off with our first dynamical system, that we start off with e x equals f of x. And what we're going to do is something like a, a change of variables or a change of coordinates using this topological conjugacy phi. Now, phi is a homeomorphism, so that means if we hit both sides of this equation with phi, we should get something that is the same. This phi preserves the topology. So what we have is phi of e of x is phi of f of x. Now, if I rewrite that using operator notation, using compositions, then what I get is phi composed with e of x equals phi composed with f of x. And now we see where that definition has revealed itself, because with the topological conjugacy, phi composed with f is really g composed with phi. Okay, uh, where is this going? Well, I need one more small step. You're going to have to think a moment to convince yourself that a homeomorphism is going to commute with the shift operator so that phi composed with e is really e composed with phi. And now for our final step, what we're going to do is literally a u substitution. We're going to say let u be equal to phi of x. I'm going to use phi to change coordinates. Then I can rewrite this system as on the left, e composed with phi of x is e u. On the right, g composed with phi of x is g of u. So in the end, what we have is that e x equals f of x got converted to e u equals g of u, this conversion happening by this homeomorphism phi, this topological conjugacy. That really means that these are the same dynamical system. They have the same equilibria, they have the same periodic orbits, every other orbit matches up bijectively via this topological conjugacy. Whew, well, I'm tired. And now it's time to return back to where were we going? Why did we do all this? We did all this in order to be able to compare two dynamical systems and say when they're the same. And when it comes to nonlinear maps, of the circle, there are some cases where we can say that these nonlinear dynamics are really the same as just a rigid rotation. One of the best theorems about this is something called the Dangeois theorem. The Dangeois theorem says the following. Let's say you've got a dynamical system on the circle, E theta equals F of theta, where F is a map of the circle to itself that is 
not only differentiable, but twice differentiable. So the second derivative exists. Now, if this system has no equilibria and no periodic orbits, then, well, how could that happen? Oh wait, we've seen some examples of such systems. We've seen the rigid linear rotation of a circle that's just e theta equals theta plus omega for omega an irrational number. But this is a nonlinear system that we're talking about. Aha, the Dangeois theorem says that if you have this nonlinear system, no equilibria, no periodic orbits, then it is topologically conjugate to a rigid, irrational rotation, to one of these things that is just theta plus omega, where omega is a particular irrational number. Now, that's pretty cool. It's also pretty hard. We're not going to do a proof of this. And the reason we're not going to do a proof is that there are several very subtle points. Now, the first remark I'll make is not that surprising. In this case, just as with a rigid rotation of the circle that is irrational, every single orbit wanders densely around that circle and fills it up. But, and what makes this such a cool theorem, is that every single hypothesis is critical. If you change that smoothness condition, that twice differentiability, if you modify that just a tiny bit, relaxing that second derivative to be not quite existing, then that's it. It all goes away. And there are examples of dynamics which are irrational, no periodic orbits, no equilibria, but they do not have all the orbits dense. Some get squished around. It's kind of hard to visualize. But these things exist, and every hypothesis in the Dangeois theorem is critical. Now, speaking of smoothness, you might say, well, sure, F is smooth, but what about the topological conjugacy, this homeomorphism phi? Does that have a first derivative, a second derivative? Must it be smooth? And the answer is, no, it does not have to be. In fact, there are some nonlinear maps of the circle that are really conjugate to an irrational rigid rotation, but are so weird that that conjugacy cannot be chosen to be smooth under any circumstances. But the thing that's so subtle about it is that it depends not only on the weirdness of that nonlinear map, but, but on the weirdness of the irrational rotation number. Depending on how irrational it is, in terms of something called a Diophantine condition, you may or may not be able to get a smooth topological conjugacy, and that is what makes this subject of irrational rotations so irrational. This is not something to worry about. This is bonus material. We're just having a little bit of fun here. But what is going to be important to you is this idea of equivalence between dynamical systems, this notion of topological conjugacy. But we don't need that quite yet. This is just bonus material.